Hello there, uh, my name is Jordan. I am a 3D artist and a visual effects artist in general. Uh, you might have also seen some of my short films on this YouTube channel. This is just a place where I put up all my art basically, along with uh, uh, on my art station, which should be linked in the description. Uh, thank you for coming and watching this video. You're clearly interested in either 3D art or in how this particular piece was made. And I'm glad you're here. This is the, one of the first times I've ever recorded something from start to finish, which was really cool. I, I really love seeing other people's processes from, you know, blank canvas to finished piece. I think it's, it's really rewarding, not only for the person making it, but also you guys watching it. It's a process for sure. And uh, especially this one. This took just over 30 hours. There were some things that I didn't record, like the compositing was not recorded and some of the other uh, 3D things. Sometimes I just forgot to record, but uh, most of it is. And it was, re as I said, really rewarding. Um, and watching it back right now as I record this, it's very satisfying. Um, a lot of this project specifically was... Uh, scene assembly, set design, environment design. There was not much modeling, not much like uh, and building things from scratch. It was basically, you know, kit bashing with whatever I could find. Um, the easiest thing would have been to go out and buy, you know, a, a nice big kit bash kit um, for, you know, a hundred bucks or something. But, um, you know, I I don't want to do that for an, a fan art piece. Um, you know, what I can't make myself, like those chains you just saw, um, or like, you know, the environment itself, like there's there's enough work that goes into or that is required of, of, of us um, in just the environment design to, to begin with. Um, if you saw at the beginning of the video, there was a, a sketch, like a, like a rough drawing, um, and that was the reference that I had to go on, that and the description of the uh, the environment. This is a, a town in a D&D campaign that I've been watching on Twitch called uh, Godforged, uh, hosted by uh, Joe Fudge. You can go check it out. The links will be in the description as well. And uh, I, I was captivated by the concept of the environment. I thought it was awesome. thought it was really uh, a really interesting idea. So awesome. I, I wanted to realize it. I, I had an impulse and so I followed it. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, as I was saying beforehand, this, uh, this town is called Cradle by the Sea. And the cradle is the giant castle rock thing up top. Um, I probably could have changed some of the way I designed it. Initially, I thought it was a castle on top of a rock, but it seems like it was it was more of a a castle that was a rock, and uh, you know there should have been cannon ports all along the sides. So if I were to do this again, uh, it would definitely be a, a bigger focus. The town took up a lot of my time uh, building, figuring out how this town was going to integrate with itself and the environment and all the pieces. Um, and, you know, little things that you don't realize uh, that uh, are going to need your attention and take time away from other things. Here you can see one of the examples is taking the, uh, the, the kit that I downloaded from Sketchfab. Um, all of these are linked in the description on the ArtStation page so that you can see all of the elements that I downloaded uh, for this. Pretty much everything here is free minus the elements from Megascans and a couple of textures from textures.com using some premium points that I had on there uh, for just general projects and also other personal projects. And uh, in this case, it's been really encouraging to see this because this is all, pretty much everything here was done with um, free things. The uh, Most of the models were free. Most of the textures were free. The Blender itself is free, which is the program I'm using. Uh, so, you know, and then half the stuff that I that I made that was really detailed either ended up um, being made from scratch, like the chains and just, you know, and it's just a single link repeated over and over again. Um, um, but you can see that I basically set up a camera angle and went for it. So bottom left corner or kind of middle left, you can see the camera angle kind of zoomed in. 
so I can always know what I'm working from. I knew that this was only going to be a single shot, a single frame, so I built the environment around that frame. I didn't want to fuss around with uh, trying to make it a fully animated scene because I've been doing that for other projects and the environment has taken six months instead of uh, six days. One of the ideas for this project that I had was to use photo scanned assets, photo scanned uh, buildings and castles for the, uh, for the extra detailed areas of the environment. So instead of going and buying a, uh, a detailed kit bash kit of castle looking features, I went and found a bunch of real castles that were free to download on Sketchfab and uh, grabbed them and modified them and figured out this one. This is a real castle. Uh, I think it's in, I can't remember, I'll list on the screen which uh, castle I ended up using. Um, and it was, you know, it was great. You just, it doesn't come with any detailed textures, but the uh, the textures that it comes with can be keyed and modified, you know, kind of jankily. So it might not hold up in a daylight scene, but I knew I was going to be doing nighttime so that I could match the time of day that the story took place in on the D&D campaign and also to get some really cool uh, harsh lighting and such. Initially, I wanted the composition to have a bunch of foreground elements and I had trees and rocks and all, all manner of things in the foreground, but ended up ditching them for the final render. I honestly turned them off for um, RAM purposes, but then decided I would leave them off when I did the final one so that you could see and enjoy most of the environment. Again, this was more of a concept piece than a, uh, or an art piece than a, a shot in a film. If I was doing a shot for a film, this would be very different. It may even have movement. That's kind of how the, the final product uh, should influence the approach. Um, you can see me making things not very low detail when they're far away, not using LODs very much. Um, using some low detail stuff and trying to because of out of necessity for, and, and, you know, ability to complete the project. But um, while I was doing these chains, for example, um, which I ended up ditching in the end, these chains were very high resolution up close and uh, duplicating them a thousand times was still heavy, even though they were instances of each other in an array, it was still uh, way too detailed for what it was. In uh, If I was to do, redo this, I would have made a chain texture, which you'll actually see me working with uh, near the end. So we're about halfway now and I'm building the docks for the town and rejigging some of the layout, uh, adding more buildings, adding more platforms, because I felt like it was a bit too uh, a bit too small, needed more of the frame to be filled up with, with buildings and having more lights and, uh, and detail down there, a little less water. And uh, you, I decided to leave in all of these pauses because it is a lot on the screen moving super fast. This is sped up 10,000 times. Uh, to fit it into a 10 minute video so that it's not, you know, a half hour video essay on, on environment design and environment building in, uh, in, in Blender. I am by no means uh, an environment artist, but I enjoy it. And uh, this kind of stuff is very gratifying once you start taking simple things like, you know, boardwalks and cutting them up and using them to make pillars and watchtowers and all of that. Um, initially as well, back back a while uh you would have seen that i made the tower round initially and ended up switching it to a square tower to match the structure and design of the uh the pillars that are holding up the cradle and uh the big concrete looking area um underneath the castle on the screen right and also i noticed that the townhouses that I had downloaded had square chimneys so keeping that square um, uh, aesthetic helps keep continuity and that's one of the biggest things I found with uh, CG is if there is interaction between the elements and if there is uh, continuity if you can keep things continuous and interactive then your CG will look great because you won't be distracted by things and not interacting or, or not being consistent. You're seeing the story rather than the elements themselves. 
here I used a plugin called Human Generator just to generate some some dudes and uh, uh, just to populate the town. But in the middle of uh, doing this, I remembered that the in the story the town was uh, on, had like a curfew, and so this was the time of night when the guards go around telling everyone to get in their homes, to get off the streets. And so I went and found a free guard 3D model on uh, Sketchfab as well. A great little model. Um, again, links are on ArtStation for all of the models used. This was rigged. It was amazing. And then for the for their shields, I did something that I, a trick that I've been using quite a lot with uh, instancing, and that is. Uh, in this case, I took a shield, from a Roman shield, and just changed the texture so that it was a flat metal and added a bunch of uh, randomized noise and randomized reflections and, and roughness here and there. And taking that, I could then run it, the vector data through a, a random number generator based on the object. So every object gets assigned a random number with this material, and it meant that Every time you copy the shield, it generates a different pattern. So that was uh, very satisfying. So here I'm doing the water and the ocean. I realized that there could have been a better way of doing this. I had a lot of trouble with this uh, area around the town, trying to get it flat while keeping the big waves in the distance. It's it's very fantastical, very uh, um, unrealistic, but it worked for the shot. Then with all of that done i was building the shader for the water i couldn't be bothered trying any free textures or, or shaders on uh, available online and you can if, if if they're out there i'm sure they are so i just decided to build it from scratch uh, again if i was doing this properly i would have used the ocean modifiers uh, foam shader instead of trying to use the pointiness value or pointiness factor it didn't work as well as I thought, and I had some strange problems with the ambient occlusion, trying to use that in Cycles Renderer. But it ended up working fine, and I, I, I made a, a, a nice material that had a nice deep blue to it, so um, it, uh, it stayed dark and specky and nice like that, which was uh, very satisfying. And then I just threw a quick texture on all of the, uh, the concrete areas and uh, the concrete pillars. Originally, they were just stand-ins for where the chains should hang from, but I ended up using them and modifying them to be these big concrete structures, trying to tell a story about how the uh, how this place was built um, by, you know, these massive concrete structures being used maybe as platforms to construct it or to hoist up the cradle initially. And uh, yeah, so any manner of things um, could have happened. And this is kind of, showing some of that potentially and this was just a little guy on a boat to to add some movement and some extra detail to the chains uh the cables leading up in the end i deleted the chains that were leading up to the um to the cradle and only kept the big chains that hold it up uh, and then in comp i uh, in compositing i added in a whole bunch of small chains to uh, to match the description uh, that the dm gave of the environment and here I was just texturing the platforms. Just used some bronze textures because uh, the in the in the show itself they had some bronzy-looking metal flooring, and so I didn't need to add in the patterning because it's just too far away. But I was able to uh, to get something that looked similarish. And here I just uh, made some small uh, modifications to the texture for the castle to make some window glows. I use that as an emission mask and that just makes a, uh, helps to shape the castle a little bit more in the shadowed areas. If I was doing this properly, I would have spent more time on that, but I wanted to get on to what I'm doing now, which is making the chains a little bit more um, heavy looking, aggressive. And so I figured uh, adding in these giant spikes onto the chains that would dig into the rock if the chains happened to break for any reason um, or that would add, add just just this threatening nature to them uh, would uh, uh, would be a great choice and I'm really happy with how it ended up turning out. One of the challenges with this shot was uh, rendering the entire thing. It was a big scene even though I had a lot of instancing and a lot of 
optimization. The rocks were incredibly detailed. The cliffs were detailed. The textures were high resolution to be able to be duplicated and, and tiled. I definitely could have optimized this further. Um, and you can see me here doing some more ocean work, working on the foam around the edges. Um, but again, like a lot of these elements were very, very detailed so that you can zoom in and enjoy bas basking in all of the, uh, the little, the little stories that each thing tells. Um, and again, because this was a single shot, I knew that I wasn't going to be rendering a sequence. So with this shot, I brute forced my way through it. If I was doing this for a production, it again would have been totally different. So this was one of the first full renders that I did, and you can see I wasn't happy with the trees um, and ended up working on that. We are coming to the end now, and I skipped a lot of things. I, I, I didn't record a lot of the final touches, but I ended up reworking some of the lighting to get the trees uh, shadowing. I had a lot of trouble with trying to get the uh, chains to work in 3D, so I ended up doing them in 2D. Uh, my compositor of choice is Nuke, uh, but if you can't afford that, Blender has a compositor built into it that is very powerful and is only getting better. So I highly recommend looking into that, especially if you're getting started. Um, this was one of the textures that I got from textures.com, slapped a moon in. The sky was generated with a plugin called Pure Sky for Blender. I, I got the space version. It was like 60 bucks Canadian. Uh, well worth it if you're interested in it. It renders best in Eevee, so I end up having a separate scene inside of Blender to use the plugin with, and that makes it very easy to generate beautiful skies using the same lighting, uh, basically the same lighting setup, so everything integrates pretty well in comp. And that was the, uh, the finished product. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you got something out of this. Uh, I hope this, that it was interesting. This was a very satisfying project to work on. It taught me a lot, and I'm very, uh, very happy with the result. Uh, I kind of feel like a 3D artist now. I'm looking at this, I'm like, yeah, I think I'm a 3D artist now. So, yeah. Again, thank you for watching, and take care.